Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. We're going to start in the High Sierra because this is where all the storm systems have been coming from, nailing the Intermountain West. And you can see a couple of dogs up there playing. They got a break in the action at Palisades Tahoe. But you have a storm system coming in tonight through Wednesday. Another 6 to 12 from Shasta to Kirkwood to Sierra Tahoe to Heavenly down to Mammoth. You know, Palisades is reporting 113 inches, 113 in the last seven days. This has done amazing things to turn around the snowpack there in Lake Tahoe. In fact, December going down as the snowiest in like over 50 years with over 16 feet of snow in the month of December. Incredible stuff at Lake Tahoe. All right, so let me take you to Crested Butte. Look at the big crowds in Crested Butte today. You picked up another 10 inches overnight. 60 inches in Crested Butte in the last five days. 60 inches, I'm forecasting another 38 by Saturday. That puts you at about the century mark as a grand total for this entire storm cycle since the 23rd. If this happens, this will rival the 2017, January 2017th, Bury the Butte storm cycle, which had 100 inches. That was major. It ended up with D4 scale avalanches by the end. So we are approaching historic levels if all this plays out. We're probably close to top three right now. So again, that's Crested Butte. Let me show you the big picture and show you how all this kind of a complicated flow, but let me show you how this is all going to end. This low right here will move down and through California. A little piece of it is going to break off as a little low. We'll mark it here, and that's what's basically going to move through Colorado over the next 24 hours. But this low right here will then take up residence down here in the, uh, the southwest and kind of sit here. There's another low up here and another one behind it. This is all really important. So let me show you what happens. This low drops down the coast and sort of um, goes into phase with what's left over of that low. And then this low comes up over the top and becomes a low here in the Pacific Northwest. And by the time we get into New Year's Eve, what's left up here in the Pacific Northwest and what's down here in phase in the Southwest, the two will then merge and drop some heavier snow over Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and um, also Wyoming, and that will mark the end of this storm cycle. So that's going to be rather significant. And again, it's all about timing. In my forecast, I'm assuming at least a partial merger. Let me show you what the GFS thinks, the American model. Let me move this into Wednesday. Notice the snow in Colorado. A little piece of that low in California will break off and deliver snow through Colorado all the way into tomorrow. In fact, here's Wednesday morning. In fact, you can see the little low moving through Colorado right about there. Um, so that's Wednesday morning. Look at the low dropping south. As I was, uh, as I just drew, it's going to move down into southwest part of California. There it goes. And by the time we get into Thursday morning, this is the 30th, the pieces are in place. You've got the low in the Pacific Northwest. You've got the low right here over uh, parts of southwest California. Now watch it. Look at that low starting to spin up in California or in Colorado as early as Thursday night, New Year's morning, New Year's Eve morning. So this is the 30th. Here's the 31st, morning of the 31st. The low comes down from the Pacific Northwest. The low comes up from the desert Southwest. You've got a low spinning up in Colorado. So there's a belief here that at least some partial, at least a partial uh, merger happens. Let me take you, there's Friday night, Saturday morning. So heavy snow through parts of Southern Colorado, Northern New Mexico, as the low then begins to move away. And then we get a break across the Intermountain West for about five days. So that is a possibility. Let me show you my totals from today all the way. That includes all of today through the second. Um, look, at, look at Wolf Creek. Absolutely slam with another potentially four or five feet. Especially if this merger happens, the snow is going to hang on there for quite some time. Another 38 inches in Crestview, big snow in Aspen Snowmass, down to Silverton, one to two feet as you go Vail, Summit County up towards the tunnel and Loveland and then up in the steamboat. Another one to two feet over the Tetons, the Wasatch, big snow down in Bryan Head. I included Ski Santa Fe now on my map. That is there, another one to two feet. Tahoe gets a little bit more at 30 inches. So that's great. That's That marks the end of the storm cycle after we get all of this snow. I've got a plume for Crested Butte. You can see the big accumulations just continue. Every day is a powder day through the first of the year with another 38. Here is Steamboat. You got 22 more inches on the way. Again, all powder days up through about the first. You can see the steepness of the curve go up from 30 to 31. That's where that storm moves in into the first. 
and then it's over. Let me show you the wind issue. It does look like we're going to see a spike of wind on the 30th and 31st as the jet streak rolls from Utah into Colorado. These are some of the higher peaks in Colorado, so big wind on the 30th as this merger starts to happen. Um, also, this is interesting. I just put this together today. Season totals so far across many western resorts. Mammoth is at the top with 258 inches so far this season. Of course, that's going to go up tonight and tomorrow. Palisades is right there, formerly Squaw, if you're familiar with that. Brighton, surprising, 202 outperforming Alta at 195. I had to actually double-check that number, and that's what they're reporting. 202 at Brighton up in Big Cottonwood. Whistler Blackcomb, 194. Uh, Mount Bachelor at 184. There's Jackson Hole at 174. And Wolf Creek is there at 146. I think by the time all is said and done, you could be over 200 inches by Saturday, Saturday night. So Wolf Creek's coming up the list fast. Crested Butte's moving up. It was a very slow start to the season, but you're adding snow fast. You're above Loveland, Winter Park, Steamboat, and Vail. So there you go. We'll end on the West totals again so you can see those. Um, again, we'll just watch for the timing of this merger and see if it happens and where the final low sets up. That's what's most important. All right, take care. Always appreciate you tuning in here.